How's it going everyone, it's Red Effect, and today we will be taking a look at new M1 E2 SEP V3 Abrams variant and what are all the features we can expect from this new step in evolution of M1 Abrams series. Let's start with the upgrades regarding the protection, what can we expect? First of all, the armor is finally getting upgraded. The armor package of M1A2 tanks hasn't been upgraded since M1A2 SEP, which was introduced over 15 years ago. Now, I'm not saying it should have been upgraded. When this armor package arrived, it gave M1A2 SEP one of the best armor protections in the world. It's just that it's been a while. It is said that both turret and hull are getting upgraded. Maybe finally the notorious lower glazes will finally get some love since it is kinda been known as a weak spot for all Abrams tanks. That is, if you disregard the armor fuel tanks at each side, which gave it extra protection. But it is not said, of course, how much the protection has been increased, so all we can do is guess, which isn't really a good idea. Next to the armor upgrade we also have improved IED protection, which is achieved with the Duke's Counter Remote Electronic Warfare V3. Another thing is that M1A2 SEP V3 is most probably getting an active protection system. US is equipping some M1A2 SEP V2 tanks with Israeli Trophy APS, so maybe we can expect to see it on SEP V3 as well. The tank is also getting a laser warning receiver, something I think it should have gotten a long time ago. This is something some Russian tanks had for quite some time, since 1991 to be exact, when it first appeared on T-80 UK and was passed on all T-90 variants ever since. What it does is it warns the crew that the tank is being glazed, so the crew can take necessary actions to protect themselves. This is good for Abrams in particular because all Russian or ex-Soviet tanks use laser-guided gun-launched ATGMs. That means that all countries that are operating some of those tanks can use that option. Laser warning receiver also warns the crew if the tank is being laid by any kind of laser rangefinder, which is a common use in every fire control system of any tank, including the famous T-72M that Iraq is used in Gulf War. Now let's take a look at improvements in fire control system and firepower of the new tank. Great thing is that SEP 3 is getting a third generation thermal imaging system, which will give it the ability to spot tanks at very long distances some say even beyond the firing range of sabered projectiles. It is also getting improvements in laser rangefinder and color camera. The tank is also getting an ammunition data link, which can support new projectiles. Those new projectiles are M829A4 armor-piercing fin stabilizer scarring sabered and M1147 advanced multipurpose or high explosive multipurpose. M829A4 is a new APFSDS projectile designed to defeat more modern EVA, such as Relict, which can be seen on new Russian T-80 PVM and T-90M tanks. But the problem is, it is said to be comparable in size and weight to previous MA-29A3, which would mean that the new projectile stands no chance against the armor package of T-14 Armata. But as I said in all my videos before, if they were going to face off each other, the turret of T-14 is vulnerable to any kind of Sabre projectile. Let's just hope we don't have to find out what happens when they meet each other, cause we all know what that means. Ok, now the thing I really really like is the new advanced multipurpose projectile. It has three modes. Point detonate, which means it detonates once it hits something, like a standard high explosive projectile. The other mode is air burst. It can be set to detonate above the target or near it, which can be very useful against entrenched infantry or low flying helicopters. And there is a third mode, which is Fuse Delay. What it means is that it explodes with a delay after going through something. And the best thing is, it is really good at penetrating. On tests, it managed to penetrate the side armor of T-55's turret, which is over 100mm thick. So it means it's very useful against lighter armored vehicles, such as APCs or some infantry fighting vehicles. It can even penetrate side armor of many modern tanks. Russian tanks in particular have 80mm of side armor protection. That is, if we disregard explosive reactive armor plates and other stuff they put nowadays. But against older T-series, it would be extremely useful. The tank is also getting improved APU, which, like on previous SEP variants, is placed behind the armor next to the engine. 
and with this improved APU, the fuel consumption should be lower than before. Another improvement is implementation of vehicle health management system, which reports the maintenance status to the crew. The tank is also getting line replaceable modules, which will improve the diagnostics and repair of various parts. Connections are also getting approved with new network compatibility, which includes HMS radio and GBCP mission command. Krauss is getting replaced by Krauss LP or Low Profile, which is designed with the same purpose but is much lower and smaller than the original, reducing the overall silhouette of the tank. The tanks are already being delivered to the army, mainly for testing purposes, and the tank is expected to enter service in 2020. If you want to know how would M1A2 Sep V3 compare to the new Russian T14 Armata, check out my other video. I'll leave it on the card that is that I up there that should pop up now. And that is it, thanks for watching. If you like my content, subscribe if you are new. Check out my Patreon if you want to support my channel, or join my Discord server if you have any questions or just want to chat. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.